Amen. I just want to read this story to you because I believe this story is related to what we're going through today. The Bible tells us uh, there was a man by the name of Cush and he begot a man by the name of Nimrod. You might have heard, you can go and look in your history about who Nimrod is. This is like the days we are living in. The Bible tells us Nimrod, he began to be a mighty man, a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of the kingdom was Babel. Babel, Babel was the kingdom that Noah established. The Bible uses the word, he was a mighty hunter. I don't know. Perhaps, uh, maybe at one point, uh, he knew God. Uh, perhaps, maybe at one point, uh, he walked with God. Uh, but, I, you know, that will surprise me. Because the father, one of his grandfather, his grandfather, his Noah, he would have heard the story about how God saved them uh, from the flood. Uh, God asked them to go into the ark, uh, and he rescued his family. N uh, Nimrod would have known about it. Uh, and God took time to say he was a mighty hunter. But you know what, uh, History tells us Nimrod started uh, the city of Babel. The city of Babel is in Iraq today. The city of Babel is where Iraq is today. And it's present day. And if you look in your history, it tells us Nimrod began to worship idols. He began to worship idols. He wanted people to worship him. He wanted people to bow before him. He was a wicked man. He was a wicked. He became a wicked king. And people's wives, he would take people's wives become his own. People's daughters he will take to become his own. He was wicked and evil man. And if you think about the time of Nimrod, you will think what good can come out of this nation. <laughs> this man was wicked like we see in Iraq today. The people's heads are being chopped up. Hands are being chopped up. Innocent people are dying. They're losing their lives. For what? You know, it's easy for you to watch the news and just drink your tea and feel, oh, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. How would you feel if you were in Iraq today and you were so afraid you can't go out? I'm afraid that your head's going to be chopped up in a minute. That's how Nimrod was. He was the evil king. How are people going to be delivered? How are the people going to be set free? But you know what happened? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says in chapter 11 now, the whole earth had one language. They had one speech. Okay. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shina. Shina. And they, they, they dwell there and they said to one another, Come, let us make Greek. Let us take them thoroughly. That, that, that Greek was done and they had asphalt for mortar and they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city. A tower who's up to the heaven. You see, Nimrod's kingdom, they wanted to build a tower to heaven. They wanted to get to heaven without God. It's just like many people today. They want to go to heaven without Jesus. They want to go to heaven without God. They are building. They, they have it like, you know, spaceships. People want to go in space. Oh, let's go see what is in space. The earth is being destroyed. Let's go find a new home. They're firing rockets into space. Without Jesus, you cannot enter heaven. Without Jesus, you cannot get into heaven. The Bible tells us in this day. Look at what it says. And it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they will begin to do now. Nothing that they, they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down. And let us confuse their language. That they may not understand one another. You see, unity is good. But even unity is bad. God said he was going to confuse, he confused their language. That's the reason why we have many languages. That is a good thing. God wanted that to happen because he saw the evil in the heart of man. You see, at this time, was a man by the name of Abraham was born. You will think, how can good come out of this evil? But Abraham was born. And through the descendants of Abraham, 
Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Oh, maybe you're watching the news today and you've been so depressed and you've been so afraid and you're wondering, how am I going to be something in my life? You can be Abraham. You can be the one that is called in the wilderness. God can call you and you can rise up and God can use your mouth. You can begin to preach the truth and Saul can be saved. Hallelujah. You don't have to settle for second best. You can receive the, the words of the living God. Let God call you. This is the last thing. Don't let ISIS make you go in the cave and hide for the rest of your life. Come out of the cave. Let Jesus use you. Let Jesus save you. The Bible says, whosoever believes in Jesus shall have everlasting life. You see, Abraham was around, but Abraham didn't have to stop them from evil unity. God did it. God did it all by himself. Same way, likewise. God is in perfect control. God is not panicking.